Thank you to my Patreon members, Tech Nukem and Mason Kayser for making these videos possible. What's going on YouTube? It's Councilscope back with another video. Today I'm going to be doing a Luka Doncic poster design concept in Photoshop. This is a beginner friendly tutorial, so strap in and get ready to learn. You guys see this peer reference board that I have and I, peer reference is one of my favorite apps on the planet. So go check it out, peer ref. I'm not sponsored. It's just a great app to sort all your thoughts. This was the first one I really liked. It was just very simple, put out and had nice cutouts, good text, clean, and it's just very readable. Just to go a little bit further, I might have a little bit of a paragraph in there, kind of how I sketched it out. This is how I'm thinking about what I'm really gonna do with the concept. A picture of Luka Doncic right here, and that's gonna be his waving photo, theoretically. This will be the side, the profile shot. This will be another profile shot, a little bit more of a dynamic angle. And then the 73 for the 73 points that he dropped will be right above where he's waving goodbye. So this really just creates that story and it's gonna create balance within the piece piece of his jersey with his signature sign so that it all comes together. And I think it's gonna be dope. How I'm gonna mask this is I'm just gonna take my object selection tool, my favorite tool to start masking, and I'm just going to find an area where it's going to start selecting him. And make sure that you have combined shapes on, on right here on the top left. Every time you make a new selection, it's going to keep stacking onto it. And let's see what that mask is gonna do. And I like to hit Q so I can really see what it is, has selected. So once I hit Q, I see that red outline and it did a pretty good job actually. If you ever wanna clean anything up, I like to use the lasso tool after I'll use the object selection. So shortcut L right here, the polygonal lasso tool. And then I'll just click around the areas where I think need to be selected a little bit more. I'll try to get just a little bit of this area. So make sure you got that combined shapes on so you can keep stacking your selection. And with hair, be a little bit random. And then you're gonna hit the layer mask icon right here. Make a layer underneath the mask so I can really just have a plain background. Control or command and then hit this plus layer sign. And then make a solid color on whatever color you'd like just to separate them from the background. So now I can see this mask a little bit clear. Bring your hardness up just so you can get some of these areas. When you're on the layer mask, paint white. You can bring back a little bit of detail. Hit this brush folder and then go to brushes right here. and if you don't have this downloaded, download my concept art brush pack. It's in the description. Go down to where you see pelt three. Mine has already changed the hairbrush, but just choose pelt three and then you can rename it. So I highly suggest to rename it to hairbrush. And then from there, I'm gonna paint black on the layer mask so that it's gonna hide. Now I get a little bit more of a realistic effect to go up top here where I see a little bit of the fringe going on. I double click on this layer mask. Use your refine edge tool right here, R, and try to just get some of that white, those white parts out of the hair. Make this into a smart object. So right click and convert it to a smart object. And then we're going to bring it into camera. You convert it to a smart object so that when you make adjustments, you can always go back on them. Hit Command Shift A or Control Shift A, and we're gonna enter camera. So I like to add some clarity to my mask, add some texture in. You wanna keep your clarity and texture usually under 25. A little bit of sharpening to the mask for sure. Go to our color mixer. Skin tones are usually gonna be your oranges and reds. I'll slide the skin tones minus six and I'll probably bring my oranges up a bit. Let's go with 15 works with me. Lift the blues up a little bit. Plus five on my blues and you know, that's good. I have that smart object. So if I ever wanna go back in, I can just double click and we could adjust it again. You can always copy your settings. If you just hit Command C in Camera Raw, it'll copy your previous settings so that once you open a new mask and you're on Camera Raw, you can put those same exact settings. Now you might have to change it a little bit. It'll save you time. I'm gonna do the same exact process on these other two masks. So with this one in particular, he's a little bit too cool for me on the photo. I'm actually gonna push my temperature. If your temperature is gonna be warmer, you're gonna get more oranges in there naturally. This mask has some excess areas. What I'll do when I have a little bit on the outsides that I don't need is go to the layer mask. So make sure you're on the layer mask and then go to your lasso tool, the plain lasso tool, not the polygonal. And then pick areas that you see a little bit of excess mask overlay. Go to filter, other, minimum. And then you can take away some of the mask so that you can get rid of that excess very quickly. Once I do the smart object and I'm ready to move everything onto the canvas once again, see if I wanted to transform, so I hit control T and I try to transform that. It turns back to the OG look, so I don't really like that. So I just make it a smart object once again before I move it onto the canvas I'm gonna be working on. I'm gonna be working on a 2000 by 2500 
canvas at 300 dpi and 16 bit uh, color space place these mask on the canvas as i need the right click when i'm in the transform and i'm going to flip this one the only thing i need to be wary of hiding is the tattoo if a real luka Doncic fan knows they're going to be like that is not his uh right arm it's the left and then yeah you know so whenever i need to i'm going to go right off my reference and go off of that i'm going to make a solid color and i'm going to have it not exactly white have it almost white found this font called cormorant i do like the 72 the two is a little bit small not what i'm looking for delete the two leave the seven and then i'm going to make a duplicate copy of the seven so hit command j and then just write out a two hear me out i wrote the 72 on here don't not knowing why i knew he had 73 so through the process just ignore the 72 and stay focused on the tutorial stay focused on the main content all right i'm gonna put pts underneath i might type out points and I'll put a, just with the rectangle tool, I'm gonna make a mask on this rectangle and hit G for your gradient tool. Make sure that your gradient is going from darks to shadow uh, right up here. You can choose it in basics, darks to shadows, and make sure that it's on whatever this is, make sure it's on that and hit this like that. I like whatever this layer style is, so I'm gonna go ahead and use this layer style. I can probably mess around with it and make it look better. I'm gonna right click, copy the layer style, and I'm gonna paste the layer style. Name all your layers. I find myself not doing that. Right here, I'm gonna create another layer mask and then like we were doing before, make sure this time you just have your brush hardness, very low hardness, and we're gonna brush black to start blending this into the scene. So drop your flow down as well. A little bit of a fade. And that's looking pretty clean to me. Put this right here. So to make a floor shadow, go right underneath the mask command or control and then hit the new layer. Then we're going to go to the semicircle, hit solid color. Going to bring this all the way to black. Click on the layer mask of the solid color, invert the mask, command I or control I. Go to your brush, bring your brush down to flat to the ground and you're going to be on low flow. And then we're going to brush white to make that floor shadow happen. Finding out that I actually don't really like that layer style, so I just actually changed the color of the text right now. I'll just change it to a very light gray. Just that subtle look so you can really see it. It's just not right in your face as much. Add curves adjustment to this Luka Doncic mask. Clip this layer to him, so create that clipping mask. And then do three points to your midtones, shadows, and your highlights. First, I'm gonna bring the midtones a little bit up. And I'm just kind of trying to make him really fit the mold of this piece. Bringing my shadows up can help since it's a white piece. Play around with your midtones in the middle, your highlights at the top, and your shadows at the bottom. I can actually hold down all or option and drag the same curves onto the next mask. But you can always adjust if you need. Go right above your background layer and you're just going to add a new layer. Hit I for the shortcut for the eyedropper tool. See what color you're really on right now. Go darker from that and go back to the brush tool. Choose a low flow so six will be fine. And then start bringing a little bit of gradient to it just so it starts lifting up in different places. So just brush and then erase. Brush, erase. And if I'm gonna find a nice balance between my darks and my lights and my just bases of the design. Go back to the top and you're gonna add a solid color. And this one's going to be basically white, but you're going to choose linear dodge for the blending mode here. Okay, you're going to invert it, paint white on this layer mask. And this is going to just be like a kind of glow layer to showcase. Okay. They're really part of this scene, this white faded out scene. And this is going to help sell that they're part of this graphic. So I'm going to see what a little bit of desaturation looks like. Minus 15 looks pretty good. I'm gonna try out a color lookup pack on shopscope.com. Make sure you guys log into shopscope.com. I have a bunch of packs on there that just help sports designers, including this love pack that you're gonna be seeing showcased. See which one I like. Give me the vibes. All right, let's go with enter vibes at first, and then I'm gonna cycle through the layer styles. Let's use enter vibes on hue. I'm not very shy to using the color lookups. I'll use a couple if I really think they're gonna help. I can take my flow and make it lower and then just make them a little bit more subtle, especially for right here where it gets very noisy. Just make it a little bit more subtle 
you don't need as much. I wanna desaturate the T. Drop my saturation down, cautious of where I'm desaturating, and then bring your lightness up a little bit on your hue and saturation. Right click on the hue and saturation, go to blending options. See this current layer slider? You're gonna drag this slider to get a little bit more of a blend. To separate these triangles and get more of a feather, you just hold down Alt or Option, and then you take these triangles apart. You can always desaturate the jersey, which will help as well. Adding more sauce. Go on the Luka Doncic mask, whichever one you wanna start with, add an inner shadow. Set this inner shadow to linear dodge, make the color white your opacity up and see how it's making that glow around him. Put your angle to, you know, we'll just make everybody go from the top right, be consistent. You can actually make a layer from an effect. So right click the inner shadow, create the layer, bring it to the top, layer a mask, and then just paint black on some of the areas so that it looks a little bit more natural. So do this for the rest of the mask. Clicking and dragging with the rectangle tool, Let's change the color back to that blue once again. If your properties aren't open, go to window and then go to properties right here. You're just gonna make this curve. Hit command J, make a duplicate. I'm gonna have no fill. Stroke could be a little bit skinnier if you like. I'm gonna use the rectangle tool, add a blue, and then I'll use it again. And this time, let's add like black, or let's go back to the gray that we were using. Make it a little skinnier. I'm gonna add a layer mask, blend it out like this. Do you want some more sauce? Okay, fine. Fine. Let's make sure we get the date. Alexa, what what's the date? It's Saturday, January 27th. Okay, yeah, so I'm right. Just maneuver it a little bit. Going on this jersey texture, gradient map right here. And then make sure you have a gradient map clipped. And this is already pretty good. A gradient map goes from dark to light, so just remember that. This blue slider to the mid-tones so that I can get a little bit more shadow. My shadow down, and then I'm gonna drag this slider till I get something pretty similar. Back to the rectangle shape. Use this to make a shape that's gonna be for the actual jersey. Make this into another clip to add a stroke to the outside of this rectangle. Go into a line outside, go like that. Make it the same color we've been using. A signature Luka Doncic, and I'm gonna put it right over the jersey. You saturate it, lift it a little bit. To merge your layers together, go to Control, Alt, Shift, E, right click, convert to Smart Object. Now we're gonna go on Camera Go right to this tab called Profile, and I like to browse on the Profile tab. Feeling Modern 10, I think that's giving us the vibe I'm looking for. You can choose your amount that you wanna have of it. Add some grain here. It's becoming signature with my artwork at least. The look gave us kind of that gradient of the blue. My midtones, a little bit of a little bit of pink, a little bit of red, a little bit of pinkish red. Shadows, I'll make them um, blue. And highlights, it'll bring a little bit to yellow. Thank you guys for watching this tutorial. I hope you learned a lot through this process. If you haven't yet, check out the video that's right up here and make sure you guys hit that subscribe button. Also turn that bell on and you'll know whenever I upload.